I'd like to talk to you about the way salmon spawn. And to do so, I want to take you to my cabin in northern British Columbia. Now here, there are a number of different salmon species that spawn every year. And at this peninsula here, in every second year, we see large numbers of pink salmon. Pink salmon are only here every second year because they have a strict two-year life cycle where they always mature at two years of age. And so in odd years, you might have a lot of salmon and then not in even years, simply because the odd year run is strong and the even year run is not, and they never intermix. Now at our cabin this year, 2021, there were very large numbers of salmon spawning at this point. The goal here was to try and find within this mix of hundreds of pink salmon all actively fighting with each other for access to spawning sites and to mates to find within them one particular female who was close to spawning. And then I could set up the cameras and try to catch her in the act, which is hard to do. So I eventually identified a female based on how well her nest had been prepared and the interest that males were showing toward her and set up uh, all kinds of cameras, underwater, above water, etc. So let's first take a top-down view. So here you see a number of females with their attendant males that are building and defending their nests, which are called reds. Now, the females will remain relatively stationary. That is, they'll occupy an area of maybe four meters square, maybe a bit bigger, where they defend that area from encroaching females so that those females don't dig on top of their own eggs and remove them from the gravel. Meanwhile, males are, tend to be more mobile, where there are groups of males that are attending to individual females in a structure that we'll talk about in a minute. So most of the movement here is the males moving around. Now in this next uh, clip, you can see some of the behaviors of the females on the right. The female is digging in the gravel to prepare a little egg pocket of large rocks for her eggs, such that they will have good irrigation and circulation of water to bring oxygen and remove wastes. And you can see the females here jockeying for position and fighting with each other to make sure that their territories are not encroached upon. Now the way I figured out a female that was close to spawning was to look at the way her egg pocket within her red was developed. And so you can see there's large rocks in the bottom and the female is probing her anal fin into those rocks, presumably testing to make sure that they are of the quality of uh, preparation that she wants. Meanwhile, all those males behind her are jockeying to be close to her for the precise moment at which she actually spawns. Now these males are getting really intense about it. The male in front is the alpha male, he's the dominant male, and the ones behind are subordinate males who are trying to get in just as quickly to fertilize the eggs when she releases those eggs. Meanwhile, the larger male is trying to make sure that they don't get close so he can fertilize most of the eggs. This level of excitement among the males can become quite disruptive for the females. Now here the female is a little bit out of the nest, let the males calm down, and now she's gonna go back in and decide that I'm gonna spawn, the other male rushes in really quickly, and then all the other males try to get in there too. So let's slow this down and take a closer look. So here the female is putting her vent to release her eggs down the bottom. The dominant male sees that, rushes forward, and releases a little squirt of milt or sperm to fertilize the eggs. Meanwhile, the other males rush in and try to share in the action. Here's another angle at the same thing. You can see the female moving over and they're doing what's called gaping, uh, either to synchronize their behavior or perhaps to help hold them in position where they both release uh, their gametes, they're fertilized, and the other males rush in in hopes of getting a little bit of the fertilization opportunity. Now, the female then has released her eggs, which are presumably fertilized by the male. You can see a few eggs uh, washing away in the current and so now she has to cover them up quickly so she does what's called covering digs she moves forward and from various angles and just kicks lightly at the gravel to put slightly smaller rocks on top and then if we speed this up we can see the female doing this many many times and layers of smaller gravel accumulating on top of the larger rocks that are housing the egg pocket in which she's placed her eggs 
So she will continue to do this for some time. Males will show, particularly the subordinate males, will show less interest at this time because they know the female is not going to spawn again right away. But then eventually the female will, if she still has eggs, build another egg pocket just upstream where she will dig deeper again, remove all the fine sediments to create a new egg pocket, and then males will get more intensely interested again and the process will start all over again. But the reality is, is that the tens to hundreds of thousands of pink salmon that are in this river right now, including maybe a thousand just on our property, are all gonna die within a week. So they started spawning about a week ago and they're gonna be done within a week. They're all dead. It's called semoparity. That means you only spawn once and then you die. And they do so partly because they run out of energy. So they gathered energy in the ocean by foraging in the ocean and then they stop feeding, swim 200 miles upstream or in some places, you know, way further than that, like 1,000 miles upstream, 1,500 kilometers, and using only their stored energy. And then they do all their spawning with their stored energy. And they, it's so intensive, they work really hard, and then they die. So this guy here, he's still alive, still breathing. The male who has spawned, you can see how much uh, effort he put in with his tail, and now he's just slowly dying. And a bear or a eagle or something is gonna have a really nice dinner. Thousands, tens of thousands will all be like this in a week. The stink, the stink will be amazing. And everything around here will basically home in and use them for, for food. <laughs>